Welcome to the culture. We rest at the pulse of the community, providing all things news, music, fashion events, and everything that we talk about in between. It's a lifestyle. We are the culture. Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Culture. I'm your host, Jessica Garrett Motkins, and joining me today, actress, singer, NAACP Image Award winner, my friend, my friend, my friend, Cassie Davis Patton. Welcome. Yay! Hi, Jessica. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Jessica. You did it. Yes. No, we did you. it. And you, I am so happy to finally get into your schedule. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Because you got a lot going on. Well, God is good. Yes, he is. God is good. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Even in the pandemic, girl. Even That's in right. a pandemic. Hello. You believe that. He is just good all the time. All the time. And, and he can use anybody, you know. He, mm, anyway, okay, that'll be another thing. Okay, where are, you, Kathy, where are you right now? Like literally, where am I sitting? Are you in LA? Are you in Detroit? Are you in New York? Are you in Got it. Atlanta? I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, honey. I'm in the blue state, honey. I'm in blue Atlanta. In the blue state. Hey. How are things going there? Decatur made it greater, baby. Decatur made it greater. We got two senators. Ha, ha, ha. Georgia is blue. Hello. And nothing could get better than that. But I live in Alabama with my husband, happily. Oh, yes. Did she just say her husband? Happily. Yes, I did. Oh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. My high school sweetheart, baby. What's yes. his name, Cassie? His name is Carrie Patton. P A T T O N. That's my high school sweetheart. Oh, I've been in love with that man since, um, well, really, probably I would say for real, for real, sixth grade. Wow. But, uh huh. He was picking me up, taking me to band practice in the seventh and eighth grade. Now, who driving in seventh and eighth grade? That's what we I'm were. We were. He was. We were. He was reading to our class in first grade. He's just, he's been, he been smart all his life. He's just mm. smart. Yes. Mm. I love him. I love where you are right now. I'm so happy for you. Like, thank you. I'm happy for you. Because you're new. You're a newlywed, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Well, four years in. Yeah, we just celebrated our fourth anniversary on Jan January 11th. Nice. Yes. Nice. It was so sweet. We got married um, January 11th, 2017 at one o'clock in Vegas at Chapel of the Flowers. And the address was 1717 Las Vegas Boulevard. We were on the seventh floor. We had the seventh room. And so it's just like, I love numbers. So uh -huh. it's just been really, really good. I, 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 we, we doing very well. Now, I mean, I, I don't want to paint. I don't want to paint a false picture. Don't sleep. We be going at it. But if I have to be married, he's the only one I want to be married to. Yeah, that's right. And you're in Georgia, in Atlanta, and then you went to school there as well, right? I sure did. I went, I graduated from Spelman College. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Eighteen eighty one. Hey, um, that's water. Um, yeah, I went to Spelman College. I was a senior for 21 years. I got there in 1984. I left in 1991. And um, I came back in 2000. Oh, yeah, I was getting ready to say, okay, go ahead. I came back in 2008 and uh, did my senior recital. I had one hour to graduate. I was a vocal performance major. And I came back in 2008 and matriculated and got my degree and graduated December 2008 and marched 2009. Now so, tell us the story about that credit. Okay. Well, um, I hail from the booming metropolis of Holly Springs, Mississippi. It's a, a small college town 
And um, my family is rather traditional. Um, I had a father, a mother in the home and um, three siblings. And uh, I came away to Spelman College and I wanted to be a voice major. And when I got to Spelman College, they introduced me to the classical form of music. And I knew about gospel music. So I came to Atlanta thinking I was gonna be a gospel singer. Mm -hmm. You know, I was coming to school to learn how to sing gospel music. And when I got there, you know, I had to develop the vocal cords and develop the entire uh, background of being a singer. And so they taught classical music. And when I got here and, and I had to do all of the foreign languages and, and recitatives and uh, arias and I was singing in foreign languages and things. And uh, I said, okay, I'll do all of that. But at my senior recital, I want to sing a gospel song. And they told me I could not. And I just did not settle well with that. And so I quit. I left with that one hour to graduate, but I had an acting opportunity. So I thought it was wise for me, you know, to go away and capture that particular moment and leave this. I was done with this. I, I had done school days. I had uh, performed with Jamonde Productions here in Atlanta. And, um, you know, I was doing plays in the city. So I thought, you know, I've, I've arrived. And I left town to go and do a play with Vicky Winans and Chip Fields. And, um, and so I thought, you know, this, this has to be the beginning and the start of me. And so just forget this degree. And y'all not gonna let me sing for Jesus. And our motto at Spelman College is our whole school for Christ. So I was like, so you want, you, you're not gonna let me sing a gospel song? And our motto is our whole school for Christ? I said, okay, never mind, I'm out. And I left, but it just nagged me that I had not completed that one hour. And I felt defeated all those many years, 21 years to be exact. And um, when I got an opportunity to come back here and began working, I said, you know what, I'm gonna get my degree. And I did. And that's when I came back to Atlanta. I got back here in 2004. And uh, I worked 2004, 2005, and then I reached out to Spelman to see if I could come back. And they let me come back January of 2008. And I matriculated and, and, and I did my senior recital and really they let me do a showcase. And I used about 16 of those fabulous um, Spelmanites and, uh, and some of them I'm still in contact. Well, a lot of them I'm still in contact with. In fact, one of my Spelman sisters, little Brittany, is getting married in March. And so I'm still in contact with all of those young ladies in some, some sort of way. I can, I can reach them all, the mm -hmm. ones that participated in my showcase. So it was a good thing. They let me create it. And, um, and I was just so happy to march and to walk and complete that. And my mother was there. Uh, my father had gone on home to be with the Lord, but my mother was able to see, you know, the fruit of her labor. And, um, and it was the craziest thing when, uh, you know, when I thought, when they thought I was graduating, I did not tell them until three days before graduation. And, and it was such a letdown for my parents. And they just did not understand what my move was and why I chose what, you know, what I did. And, um, but we got over it and uh, I graduated and uh, such is life. So he corrected, God did, he corrected my wrong. And I found him to be that type of God for me. When I thought I was standing up for him, you know, that right. was just, that, that, that was just, youth and speaking very mm -hmm. immaturely and not seasoned and coupled with, you know, thinking I'm grown and making my own decisions. And, mm -hmm. you know, I had been in school days. So, you know, you couldn't tell me I've already arrived. I don't need no degree. 
lady, don't do that. It's it wasn't really just about getting that degree. It was about completing what I started. What you started. What you started. Right. You and it was not my money. You know, it, my mother and my father invested mm -hmm. in me. Mm -hmm. And what I did basically was just take their money and put it in the street and just burn it up, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I owed them that degree um, for their sacrifice. And so I got it and I'm so glad about it. I'm so glad to just be legit. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm a Spelmanite. And I don't, I don't mean that like Spelman is better than anywhere else because it's not. I am just saying I did it. I graduated. And that happens to be where I went. So I'm excited to be a blue-hearted Spelmanite. Nice. Yes. Spelman. Hi, Michelle. Michelle was in the window with me in school day. Yes. And that was oh, why. Oh, no, you didn't. That's, that, she was like. Uh, what, what what was her line? Oh, oh, I just watched it. I love that movie. Oh, what I do I know it is you said because your face is cracked and, and on the ground. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then, and there you are. Sorry again. That's what that's one of her lines. But um, oh yes, that is a phenomenal talent out of Nashville, Tennessee. Um. Uh, Michelle was just so much fun. Oh boy, it was just, it was wonderful. Those days were just the best. You're talking about Khabibi, baby. Yes. Yeah. I love yes. Michelle. School love, day, love, love. It's such a cult classic. I'm it's, sorry? It, school days is such a cult classic. It is. It just yeah. is. That, that, that is never going to get old. Anyone who wanted to have some type of idea of what it went, was like to go to an HBCU, all they had to do was turn on school days to really, yes. to really just kind of, 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 of appreciate what you could learn and all of the different dynamics and the layers yes. of being in school and around all of these different Black people. And yes. Subcultures within that Black experience. Cassie, you've done some phenomenal work. You meet the Browns, House of Pain, Medea's Family Reunion, Medea on the Run. I mean, I am just astonished at all of the things that you've been able to accomplish over the past yeah. few decades. People just don't do that. That no. doesn't happen. No, I was bitten by the bug. Um, really, when I got to Spelman College, uh, just watching my first dramaturge in residence, his name was Lamar Alfred, the late Lamar Alfred. And uh, I came up, I went over to Morehouse College to be a part of the King Players. And he um, was directing a play and I wanted to sing in the play, but he said, in order to be in the play, you have to act. And I was just like, well, I'm, I'm not really versed in acting. I don't really know how to do that. He said, well, I tell you what, just do what I say do and you will be great. And I was like, huh, really? And so that is what I did. I, you know, he gave me a script. He said, you can read, right? I was like, yes, sir. So I read and he was just like, I need you to put a story behind this person. How old is she? Where does she live? How many siblings does she have? Does she, you know, it, you know, whatever your attributes are, those should be her attributes. So does she sing? Yes. Um, you know, is she, does she, can she cry on spot? Yes. You know, so make her use your attributes. And so I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's, that's how I tried it out. That's what I started doing. And um, it was so funny to leave Atlanta and think I'm grown and smelling myself but to only wind back in Atlanta around, you know, just the circle of life is what I call it and be back in Atlanta because the truth of the matter is I had an interview one Tuesday at Magic City and I was going to be a dancer. And, um, and uh, Chip Fields came to town the Saturday before that Tuesday and 
gave me a job, hired me as an actress. Mm -hmm. And I left Atlanta on that Monday. And so I didn't get to take my, my interview on that Tuesday at Magic City. Mm -hmm. And so um, it just, it saved my life. I don't know what type of life I would have had or how long I would have been living had I gone down another path, but I'm just so excited and I am so grateful for um, this path and just being in tune with hearing the voice of God. I mean, all the way back to, and, I, and I'm not one to just be my husband, my husband, my husband, but I knew when we left each other our senior year that I, I, I just wanted him. You know, my heart was with him. Mm -hmm. um, we we were grown young people back then, um, and uh, you know, we said some very sincere things to one another back then. We didn't know we were going to end up getting together twenty years later, but it happened that way. And um, you know, if it's if it's good, then it's worth waiting for. And so that's what I did. I I you know, and when I did date. I would always um, compare, mm. you know, no. that relationship to this particular relationship. Or, you know, if I would meet someone new, you know, I would I would look at their strengths and and measure their strengths by his weaknesses. And um, and he would always he would always win out. So I never knew when I was going to see him again or if I was going to see him again. But I remember the day I was getting ready to do my senior recital and uh, his brother, Conson, was going to play for my senior recital. And we had a rehearsal scheduled and Conson called me and said he was not going to be able to come to the rehearsal. I was like, what are you talking about? You're not going to be able to come to the rehearsal. I'm trying to graduate. He was like, my brother's in town and um, uh, my brother's in town and, and I'm going to dinner with him. And I was like, what? I was like, well, can you post, postpone it or can you push it back? I was like, give me his number. Let me call him. And um, so I just called him out of the clear blue. And he picked up and said, hello. I said, Carrie Patton? He said, yes. I said, uh, Carrie Patton, this is a voice from your past. He said, oh, I know this voice. This voice is a part of me. And I was like, oh. on the inside, I was saying, what part? What part are you in? <laughs> What part of you? I mean, how far down they go? Wait, wait, where? Where I stop at? What you talking about? Tell them, call my name out. What you saying? Right. And so um, we talked that day and been talking ever since. Mm. And so, um, you know, he lived in Alabama and I was living in Georgia. And uh, I was still traveling, you know, quite a bit to Mississippi from Georgia because I was taking care of my mom and making sure, you know, my mom was fine. And I would pass through Alabama and, you know, conveniently say, I'm passing through. Uh, are you, you, you available for lunch? You know, so it just got very good. And he would come over to Atlanta and take me out on Wednesday dates. And so um, Wednesdays are our special days still today. Um, we got married on a Wednesday. And, uh, um, so it's just been a very patient road for me to take um, to get to the joy that I have and the world can't take it away. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not always bliss. Um, you know, there's some, whew, there's some trying times going on and you can see it. I have Bell's palsy um, and I contracted this March 11th of last year and I don't know what it is, but you know, hey, I, I, I figure when it is time for the Lord to straighten it out, he will. Mm -hmm. And uh, it does not pain me, um, but it is very distracting to me um, to have, it's almost like a glitch. And, um, you know, but I, I figure uh, uh, the Lord still loves me. And my husband has not skipped a beat and missed a beat. And um, people who who um, who will um, sidetrack you or side eye you because of a defect or because of 
a disability or because of something that you have no control over, oh, that person doesn't need to be really in my life. So um, I really hadn't had anyone that just says, oh my God, I can't talk to you no more because your face is marred. No, but um, you know, everybody's been very good. But again, it's just um, whatever the plight is and however it is, whatever um, uh, comes my way, I just decide quickly to deal with it. And uh, if God allowed it, evidently I can handle it. I was going to ask you where did you and your husband reunite? So thank you for telling me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm ahead of you. No, 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 no. You're okay, not. well, it was here in Atlanta. It was in yeah. Atlanta. But you know what? The funny thing was um, when we talked that later that evening, um, he was here working. And um, uh, when we talked later that evening, he said he was on his way to California. And that's where I was living at the time. You know, I was back and forth. I was transitioning here, mm -hmm. but I still had my stuff in California. And he was saying, I'm going to California tomorrow. I was going to call your mama and get your number. I was like, you were? He was like, yeah, I was going to look you up when I came to California. I said, well, look no further. Hello. <laughs> I'm here. Hello. Right. Yeah. So it's been cute and sweet. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Cassie. Yes. 6.6 .6 million people viewed on BET September 2020. I'm telling you, the headlines were all over every news outlet. Oh my God. 6.6 .6 billion. Million. 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 million, million, million. BET. Million. Million people yes because the show went off and well, then yeah yeah but you know um i have to accredit it to uh the generations that are represented on that show you know you have to think about uh first of all the plight of tyler perry and how he just has um a market he he had a market before he had a product isn't that crazy? You know, that the Lord would just equip him with a market and he doesn't even have anything to show them yet. That's that's not how this thing goes. Usually people come to the table with a product and they try to stuff it and ship it out to the masses to make them watch it or see it or like it or enjoy it or pay attention to it. Now he has the market but he did not have a product. And so he was, he became his own product. So of course, you know, just being on his platform and in his empire, um, these people, uh, they love Tyler Perry, but then there are households that found, um, that found wonderful storylines to follow, you know, from China and Doc growing up in our eyes, you know, China and Doc were six and China was like six. And I think Doc was maybe 10 when we met them. And now she is this beautiful, beautiful 21, 22 year old. And Doc, I think is 26, 27, you know, so these young people have actually grown up in our eyes and, you know, Demetria and uh, uh, LeVan and Alan, and it's just, a group of young people. And then um, Lance just, he, he, he rocks it from the young people to the old people. Right. So um, everybody wants to laugh. And so uh, it has been uh, one enjoyable ride working with that cast of people. And um, we were all for that for, from we premiered in 2006 and we stopped working in 2011 and then BET picked us up and then we had a spinoff and went to own and then we had another roundabout and came back you know to BET or BET then took this particular portfolio um, and uh, 
and Mr. Perry's um, fans have just uh, proven him once again. Is that what you and, call uh, him, Mr. Perry? I sure do call him Mr. Perry, baby. Oh, Mr. Perry, Cassie, how cute. Yes, I call him Mr. Perry. That's my boss. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Oh, yeah, I call him Mr. Perry until he make me mad. And then what you say? I can't say that live. <laughs> tell the people what you say, Kathy. Say what? I said, tell the people what you say. That's funny. I, I call him Mr. Perry at all times. <laughs> okay. I do. I call him Mr. Perry. Yes. That's great. I should oh, have, yeah. I would have never thought that you called him Mr. Perry. Uh huh. I call him Mr. Perry. Um, you know, uh, he and I are friends, but I do not try to label or labor in that relationship because I don't ever want him to think that I'm just, uh, if I'm not working, that I'm side eyed saying, okay, what, is it time yet? You, you, you haven't called me. You can't give me some money. Can you keep? Mm -mm. I don't ask him for no money. You know, I, I try to respect his, you know, who he is. I do not call him. You know, um, he calls me. And when he does, we have a ball on the line. But, um, you know, I, I just do not want to ever abuse mm -hmm. the relationship mm -hmm. because I know how easy it is mm -hmm. because people do it to me mm -hmm. and I don't have what he has. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't have the access or the excess like he does. Um, and, and, and they do it to me. So I just, um, I really don't like the feeling and I definitely just want him to know I really do respect him as a businessman, as a boss, as a friend. Mm -hmm. And um, now there are times when it's one-on-one, -on -one, I can say it and do whatever I want to, but mm -hmm. I've already trained myself to just respect him publicly at all times. That's great. That's great. <laughs> you all was doing some shooting during COVID, didn't you? Yes, it's called going into a quarantine bubble, camp quarantine. And that, you know, even that is just like the testing process to get here. And I'm at, I'm at the studio now. Yeah, um, uh -huh, I'm at the studio now. Yeah, we, um, I was asked to be a part of his documentary. Yeah. And um, so I had my interview today. And um, uh, so the testing process, he has taking his own money and um, and he employs close to 400 people in a quarantine bubble. He houses us and feeds us and we uh, live here on site. We have to test every Monday and every Thursday. Um, and uh, it's just, it, it's for his different shows, whatever show he is putting in the can or putting on the shelf. He brings those people in and um, then he writes his scripts and directs the shows or whatnot, or has producers or directors that come in and, and work with him. And he produces those shows, uh, all of his, the recent shows that he has now, he's um, bringing those shows in and, and he has had a 100% participation. Now, every once in a while, you know, when someone, I will get tested. Oh, they throw on those hazmats, these masks and um, the face shields and they escort you off and take your stuff off and, you know, and, and, and wish you well, but they get you out of here so that everyone else can stay safe. Right. So yes, I have been in the bubble once, but to come and do this documentary, I still had to test. And you have to test um, maybe three or four times before you can come and work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Such a blessing, Cassie. It is. I'm telling you, and and that that is, I I can't do anything but lift my hands because, you know, it, it's like the Lord says, uh, in all things, you know, He will be with us, and at all times, He will never leave us nor forsake us 
Did you see all of these memes and things going around on social media asking if that was you and Kanye West's song? Oh my God. Yes, I did. I saw three different videos and I was just like, and when I saw, is this auntie, don't this sound like her? You know this is her. Girl, I was listening tell to them. it. Tell them. Like, tell them it was you asked. I was over there saying, when did I do this? That girl sound, uh, uh, the guy, girl, whoever, whoever was, they, I, we sound just like, I was like, you know what? What are they saying? That's first. Right. And, and maybe I need to call Brother Kanye and say, I, hey. I feel like you got some royalties. Did, did I? Wait no. a minute. Have you dubbed me doing something? I said, see. It was, it's been, let me tell you something. It's been so much love just from this whole experience with Mr. Perry, um, just meeting people. And now I'm not social media savvy at all. And we're gonna and, uh, that. And, we and, and I and I and I am gonna get I'm gonna get with that. I'm gonna do that because there are young people at OB, but I, I just have a, a love for young people. And um and when I am out and around up here um with these young people, they're just so eager to to be a part of positive things. Right. And so and they think I'm positive. You know, and, and I am. You are. Yeah. I was gonna say, and I am, but I'm real, you know. So uh I think they appreciate the fact that I don't skin and grin and that you know, I don't throw a rock and hide my hand. I will tell you what the actual life's reward is, um, as far as I know. Mm-hmm. And, and I so, think it's so funny, you play this older lady, and I'm like, Cassie is not that age. And, and and you play it well. You play Thank it you. well. Th- but, uh, Thank you. Yeah. What you just do? What happened? We're in the same age group, and you play a, a very older woman. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, I like those women. I know. And you. um and and those women have spoken into my life so much. That age bracket, you know, and you don't want to forget those people. No, you don't. You know, um, they have so much wisdom and experience and and uh, and I value what they say, um, you know, so playing them is relaxing and it is rewarding. And um, <laughs> and then when the young people see me and they're just like, it's gassy. You got on some juice couture boots. I'm just like, what? What do you, what do you think I was supposed to wear? What are you talking about? Oh, you got on Converse. Oh, you got on this. I'm just like, uh, yes. And they'll see me outside of right. Ella and Bam. And uh, and uh, it's just a wonderful thing when we're, when we're out, me and my husband, or me and just my friends, when we're out and and people are, you know, coming up, they, they've been touched by something that mm-hmm. we've done or said and that has just been such a blessing to me. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always good when when you're appreciated, but you run the risk of someone not liking what you're doing. Right. Um, and everybody doesn't like it. You know, right. like I've had people come up to me and say, you know, it's not even realistic for you to have Janine staying at your house and she's not even married to CJ anymore. That's okay, honey, but you're watching. So just keep watching. It's right. okay. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah, but I, you know, like I'm sure there's so many things in everybody's life that is not really what they want it to be, mm-hmm. and you really don't want anybody to see it, and you may not even agree with it. But it is life, and mm-hmm. art is art just depicts life, right. and it's this man's opinion of this particular family. Now, when it's your turn, hire me, and I'll write what you, and I'll say what you write. Right. Right, 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 right. Love you, Cassie. Thank you for coming and us. Thank you for coming and just being so transparent. And I didn't expect you to do anything other than that because that's just who you are. You Thank you, Jessica. Thank you for thinking of me. Thank you for including me. You know, um, I am so happy and I'm so proud of you 
Uh, you're a smart, smart woman, and uh, you're a businesswoman to boot. And um, I like how you, I've always loved how you uh, set, your, set your goals and you go after it and you do it. Um, and I, I just admire that about you. You are such a force to be reckoned with. And I appreciate you thinking of me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. And much success to you. And may God continue to bless you and shower his blessings upon you. I receive it. I receive it. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Come back. Come back. We're going to continue to watch you soar. Keep going. And when can uh, I when can I come back? When can I come back? Oh, I know when you can come back. Oh Lord. When when you when you when you do the thing that we talked about you doing, social media. No, 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 no. no well, that's no. what we talked about me doing. What? No, the other thing, not on the show. This is not something we talked about on the show. We'll talk about it later. Thank you all for joining us. Yes, it's a pleasure. I'll see you tonight here. Oh, you gotta be. Oh, you gotta be professional. On the oh, you, don't, oh, you don't want to get hood. We gonna me. have my. Oh, you gonna try to keep it starting at six? Oh, you gonna try to be real, real? My love oh, you, you all. Yes, we'll see my. you next time. Oh, you gonna be my Bye bye. You ain't giving me no aggy pride. You ain't gonna really turn up with me. Oh, you gonna do me like that? The Culture is produced and owned by Hip Rock Star Media and cannot be reproduced or broadcast without written consent by Jessica Garrett Motkins, All Rights Reserved 2020.